and welcome back to my channel. Today I have a project update video and it is going to be covering everything I have knit this past month in March. Uh, I guess when this video goes up it'll be April but uh, this is March 31st right now so I'm going over everything I've been working on since my last video and yeah so I'm just going to jump in right into it with what I'm wearing because what I'm wearing is my first finished object and this is called Nola and this is by Yamagara Knits on Ravelry <laughs> and yeah it's a cardigan with intarsia flowers on it and I've got four buttons on it it's a cr very cropped cardigan but uh oh my gosh look how cool that is I am so in love with this pattern okay so I think it was earlier no I guess it would have been several months ago or maybe it was sometime last year when I found this pattern on Ravelry and I when I saw the the photo like the cover photo I guess the pattern the first pattern photo on Ravelry I was like I need to have that and I so I had it on my in my favorites for a long time and it was over what was it it was a couple weeks ago I finally bit the bullet and I bought the pattern and decided I would use up yarn from stash and so the yarn that I used is a combination of four different things I had in my stash one was okay so I there were four different yarns. Um, for the cream color here, I used a cone of yarn that I picked up from a secondhand store like some time ago. And I believe it was a 50% cotton, 50% polyester blend. And then what I held it with is a Sheepies collection burlesque. And I think this was 90% acrylic and 10% wool. And I got this from a friend's grandmother who was de-stashing some of her yarn. So I got a bunch of vintage yarn. So I, I don't know. I haven't looked up this uh, particular collection, but I doubt that Sheepies, Sheep, Sheepies um, produces this one anymore. Anyway, so I held that together with the cone of yarn that I had uh, for the off-white cream. And it kind of made a little bit of a marbling effect. Not sure you can see it but the um one the cone yarn was more of a not a pure white more closer to a white white whereas the um the burlesque one this yarn here was more of a antique white I would say and then for the intarsia flowers I I basically I had a bunch of knit swatches out of Cascade 220 Merino in the this pink color and basically what I did was I just tore out all the swatches wound them up in balls and then I really I didn't even use I think I only it was a total of like three swatches that I had to undo and they were like four by four little swatches I didn't use very much yarn at all for the flowers on each side in fact I'm pretty sure yeah I did have to weave in four ends so I guess it was one and a half swatches <laughs> that I used up for each side and with that yarn, I had held double with the Hobby Diablo. So I had this left over. Is it going to focus? No. Um, I had this Diablo left over from a sweater that I knit for my sister-in-law. And so I was like, oh yeah, it, it, the color is not a perfect match. Here, I'll get it close so you can see. It's not a perfect match, but I think it, I think it turned out really nice. And it actually matches it almost matches my my shirt that I'm wearing um but yeah okay so that's I think I'm like all over the place here okay so yes the Nola cardigan it's like a cropped cardigan there's two different styles um you can knit uh so I chose to knit the wide sleeves so there's um increases Ooh, maybe it's better if I go this way so there's increases from here you can see and then there's a slit in the in the hem here or in the cuff and then I think the other um, the other style is a, a more not a fitted sleeve but it doesn't have any increases I don't think so but I really liked I really liked the way that the open like the wider sleeve looked it's kind of reminds me of a kimono almost um, yeah and so this, I think I knit size two, if I remember correctly. And 
Yeah, I knit it to pattern. I don't think my gauge, I think my gauge was off because if I, if I show you here, I've got quite a bit of uh, positive ease here. So, but I, I think it, it still fits like super cute. And the buttons, I, I just bought the buttons the other day. This was for, they're more of like, they're definitely more purple than pink. I couldn't find buttons to match the color pink of this. Uh, there was nothing even close. Everything was way too more on like the bubblegum pink side. And this, I feel like is more muted pink. It's more of like a purpley pink. So that's why I went with like the purple buttons. I thought it, I thought it would look cute. So, <laughs> but yeah, um, yeah, I'm really happy with how this turned out. I basically cast it on and finished it within a week, I believe. I cast it on right before I went to visit my sister and then I finished it while I was at her place and then when I came back home I blocked it. So it just came off the blocking mats a couple of days ago and then yesterday I sewed on the buttons. And so it was a really quick knit. Um, I think the way the construction is, is um, you knit like basically, what is it? I've knit, I've knit a couple of patterns like this where you knit the back of the collar first and then you go back and you pick up all the stitches to do to start working the raglan increases and yeah it turned out super cute considering this was all from stash yarn um I think it turned out super cute and I would absolutely knit this again and I'm wondering if I could actually I want to knit it again in the same yarn because I think I, I don't have quite enough left over of the burlesque yarn but I'm wondering if I did the, instead of doing the wide sleeves, if I did the tapered sleeves and I went down a size to the smallest size, I could probably get away with what I have left over of that. And then the flowers, I have gauge swatches in the Cascade 220 Merino in a light blue. And I have some um, drops, one of the drops, um, mohairs, kid silk mohair maybe? And it's in the same color, so, or in the same color blue, so to have another one of these with blue flowers on it would be super cute, I think. I'm just so excited for this. Like, it's Easter today and my family's coming over for, uh, like, for a family get-together. And so I'm really excited to get some pictures outside with there's, like, a cherry blossom in the front yard. So I'm hoping to get pictures of me wearing this out there because my, I really like my whole outfit today. I think it's super cute. <laughs> but, yeah, so that is... I think that's pretty much all I have to say about this. Um, yeah, it was super enjoyable. I knit it within a week. I could hardly put it down. Um, oh, right, okay. What I should say is these are intarsia, like the color work is intarsia, but I did I did a hybrid of intarsia slash um, stranded color work, I guess. Um, hold on, maybe if I take it off real quick. Okay, so Basically, I'll show you what my what it looks like on the inside so I can explain this better. So I was a little bit intimidated by Intarsia. The pattern does include links to tutorials of how to do Intarsia color work. And I looked at it and I'm very impatient. And I was like, I don't want to have to cut yarn and start, you know, new yarn for each particular section. I don't know. I, it just, it was a little bit too much for me at the time that I was looking at the tutorial. And so what I opted to do was basically stranded color work slash intarsia. So you can see I carried my floats, like I carried the yarn across, um, all the way. Um, this is knit flat, so it's, it is seamed up. So I don't know how I would have done it in the round. I don't know how that works. That's a whole other beast, but knitting flat was really easy to do intarsia. Like the, where you, where you loop the, no, you not loop, but you twist the yarn around the working, or the working yarn around the previous yarn to lock it in place. And then you continue across the row. So I just picked up, I just carried my, I just carried the yarn across every row. And I just did the, you know, pick up and lock the stitch in so that there was no gaps. I did mess up on one sleeve. There is a gap. Right, I think it's this one right here. I didn't quite, is it this one? One of the sleeves has a gap where I didn't quite pick, oh yeah, it's right here. I didn't uh, lock the stitch properly, so there's quite the gap there. 
I could go back and just kind of like sew that shut, but I'm not, I'm really not too fussed about it. But to me, the combination or the combo that I did the color work in, which was like half intarsia, half color work, I'm sure there's like an actual term for that, or it's just a hybrid of the both. Um, it worked super well for me. I don't, it was my first time, is it my first time doing color work flat where you pearl back in the color work? I think so. Um, it was, the right side row is easy to lock the stitches in. I have like a meth, like, I don't know which method it is that I use, but I like lock, or like locking the floats or catching the floats along the way. When I'm doing the pearl side, it's a little bit more finicky. I had to like kind of, you know, maneuver the stitches a little bit differently, but in the end, it was a little bit slower on the wrong side rows, but you know, in all, it was really easy. And I would absolutely, if there was something with intarsia similar to this, where I can get away with catching the floats or like floating the yarn through the back, um, I would totally do it again. So yeah. Okay, so that was that was a lot of talking about this pattern. I just, I really enjoyed this pattern and I really can't wait to knit it again. Um, yeah, I would absolutely recommend this, especially it feels like such a spring pattern and it's perfect for the season and I just love it. Okay, that's enough about what I'm wearing. Um, so let's get into finished objects. <laughs> The first finished object that I have is the Moonset Tee by Ozetta. And this is my second time knitting this pattern. And this time I knit this one for my younger sister. So this is, it's coming out more of a blue green. It's definitely more of a, it's definitely more of a yellow green in person. This is looking like a cooler green. I would say it's more of a warmer green in person, but this is the Moonset Tee. And I did the same modifications on this one that I did to my first one that I made. So basically I knit, I believe I knit the size two, which I think is the small. I think it goes extra small, small, medium, large, etc. So I think, I'm pretty sure this is size two. And I knit it on the recommended needle size. And basically what I did was I only had, oh right, and the yarn that I used is from a D-stash from a friend of mine, and this is Little Knits Divine Fingering. Little Knits, I gotta figure out why my camera doesn't focus. But that's the tag, and it is 70% mulberry silk and 30% cashmere, so it feels absolutely luxurious, like 100% I would absolutely knit with this yarn again. Um, with one... I do have one issue with this yarn. When I was knitting with it, the the dye was coming off on my fingers like crazy. Within minutes of knitting, I had already had like I already would have dyed fingers. Um, and after an hour of knitting on this, I would have to go and really scrub my hands because the dye would get really slick on my hands. Or not slick, like kind of not slick. Sorry, opposite of slick, sticky on my hands. Um, so I was often washing my hands while knitting this. And I found that really annoying, but the, after blocking, it's, I mean, it's so soft. The yarn was so soft. If it wasn't for the dye coming off of it, it would have been like my favorite yarn I've ever knit with because it's so luxurious. Um, but yeah, that was my one issue with the yarn. But otherwise, um, because I only had two skeins of this yarn and I wanted to maximize the, what I could get out of it in this pattern, what I did was I knit until I joined under the sleeves. And then, what did I do? I joined under the sleeves and then I went and picked up the sleeves and knit both of the sleeves first before finishing the body. And I knit the sleeves with the second skein of yarn. And then once I finished the, the sleeves, when I, got, I measured them against my own t-shirt because my sister liked the length of the sleeves on that t-shirt. So, or on my, on my other Moonset tee. And so I knit it to the same length. And then the modification I made again to this one was instead of doing what's written in the pattern for the bind off, I did a two by two rib. And then I converted it to a one by one to do an Italian, a one by one Italian bind off. It doesn't look like, 
if it was a one by one rib, it would look a lot nicer, a lot cleaner, but I think it looks okay. And I like that there's enough give to it. After blocking, it sits relatively straight, like it doesn't cinch in, which is what I wanted. And then once I finished the sleeves, I started helical knitting on the body, but I don't think I needed it. This yarn was very uniform all the way through. Because you can't, I don't think you can tell, like in the back, like the whole back was knit in one skein up until the, where I connected under the arms and I joined in the round. And then I started helical knitting. Mm, I can't really see a line there. I probably didn't need to do helical knitting, but just in case, it's really not hard to do helical knitting. So opted to do that. And then once I ran out of the one skein, I continued knitting it with the second skein. So there's about, there's probably about that much that's just the, the last skein uh, where there's no alternating rows. And then what I did on the hem on this one, I tried something different where I did the two by two ribbing and then I converted it to one by one and I knit one extra row of one by one rib before I did the Italian bind off. And I think it looks a little bit cleaner, I would say. And yeah, so those were the modifications. I knit it pretty much as long as I could. There's, oh, I have it in my little jar here, but I have probably two, maybe two grams of yarn left over. Uh, I probably could have gotten one or two rounds more or something, or maybe like a couple of rounds more, but I'm not. My sister, once my sister tried it on, like I blocked it and I gave it to my sister to try on and it fits her perfectly. It's the perfect length. She wears uh, mostly... I like the waist high, high waisted pants. So she's able to tuck it in, like do a French tuck, which she likes to do. Um, so yeah, it looks, it looks so good. I'm so excited. Um, I'm going to see if I can convince her to let me take some pictures of her wearing it today. I guess depending on what she's wearing. Otherwise I'll have to, I mean, I'm wearing a green skirt. I don't know how, how well a green on green will look, but I'll get pictures regardless. Um, but yeah, when I, so about the yarn, when I blocked this, when I soaked it, I didn't want to soak it very long because it's mostly silk and cashmere and I don't think you should, I don't think you're supposed to let it sit and soak for a long time. So basically I filled my little tub of water and the wool wash and I dunked it in and it, like immediately the water turned to like blue, I guess, cause the, the blue undertones in the green yarn, I guess, kind of came out. And so I took it out, rinsed out the water, put a new batch of clean water in, dumped it again. And I basically just repeated that process until the water was mostly clear. Um, and then after that, I rolled it in a towel and nothing, there was no transfer of dye on to the towel, which was good. So I think I got most of the, the dye run out of it. Uh, but yeah, it did take about three or four tubs of refilling water and draining it to get the the dye to fully come out it didn't really change the color either like i don't like there's no it doesn't look splotchy or anything it looks very uniform in person it's it's just perfect and yeah one thing that i really i think what really caught my eye on this pattern is the the what is this called the placket like where the like where it overlaps here in the front and i love v-necks and just this extra detail of the overlap there it looks really cute so i really want to knit this again for myself i have i think it's down here oh i can't grab it but i have loops and threads wool like and i think if i hold it double i can knit another one of these in white and i think that would be really cute for the summer so uh, like the loops and threads is i think it's 90 90 percent acrylic 10 percent nylon or something like that so not gonna be like the best but I think it'll be it'll be manageable <laughs> but yeah so that's my my second moon set tee that I've knit uh, my first one I knit last year um yeah so that's my I guess technically my second finished object and then my last finished object is a really small really small uh, project here and this is Augustine's number 22 and this is by Anne Sophie Velling and she does like the whole Augustine's collection. Um, if you've seen on Ravelry or Instagram, she has a very specific feminine look to her designs, which I absolutely love. So I bought two of her patterns recently. One was the bow 
and another one was one of her like frilly tops that has like a wrap on it kind of thing anyways so this bow I made with the leftover um, Cascade 220 Merino and the Diablo mohair and this pattern like blew my mind the way that it's written or like sorry not the way that it's written the way that it's it works up because in my head I was following the directions and I was like how is how is this what I'm doing going to turn into a bow and it wasn't until I got to like row five or six that I realized what was happening I was like oh I understand how it turns into a bow now so it's like one of those patterns where you have to trust the process um but yeah it's super cute I really wanted to use up the rest of the Cascade 220 um, merino and I still have a, I still have a little bit of mohair of the Diablo left over so I'll have to find something to do with that but I'm happy to have used up pretty much all of the Cascade 220 that I had um, knit up in gauge swatches so I basically undid the last two and a half gauge swatches and that got me the bow um, so it's just right now I just have it tied off with just some of the extra yarn that I used for for this cardigan and my plan for this bow was initially to put it on the back of this cardigan because what I wanted to do was like basically gather the fabric at the back not like this but essentially you know just gathering it somehow and then putting the bow back there but I think I think the bow itself was a little bit too heavy um I'll have to play around with some like maybe find a safety pin and just pin it to the cardigan to see how it looks and how much it like weighs it down because it's not not I mean it's not heavy but considering this feels like super light I feel like it might pull it down a little bit but I'll give you another look at the bow here it is super cute and the modification I had to make to this because I knew I wasn't gonna have enough yarn to make the full size was uh, it asked you to cast on a number of stitches and I cast on I think if I was to do the math I probably cast on two-thirds of the amount of stitches that you needed to cast on so had I cast on the the actual amount I would have had a longer ribbon on the sides here but I'm totally fine with the size that this bow turned out to be and the pattern I think is written technically for worsted weight yarn but the way it's written you could technically just pick any size needles and any size yarn or like needles to match the size of yarn that you have and then cast on x number of stitches to I guess I mean, there's a little bit of math involved but x number of stitches you'll figure out how long or how wide you want the like the bow to be before you cinch it in like this or fold it and then um, tie it off kind of thing but yeah it's super cute I really want to so what I'm going to do with this pattern is I'm going to like I'm trying really hard to use scraps I'm going to go and find a bunch of different scraps and see if I can knit a bunch of little bows like little bows that I can uh, maybe sew onto those like hair clip things or like the the hair snap things and then I can make little hair bows which I think would be really cute I know my younger sister wore a red bow in her hair like just a red ribbon for Christmas so I'm thinking oh if I can find some I don't know I might have some red yarn somewhere and knit her a bow to put on a little clip for her hair it'd be like super cute to have like well like I can't really show but like you know a much smaller bow than this but in your hair I think that would be super cute but yeah I mean I yeah I I'll figure out what to do with the bows but I think it would be a really good way of using up my scrap yarn but yeah so that's that's all the finished objects that I have um I pretty much knit exclusively on this cardigan for a week I knit exclusively on the moonset tee for a week I, I knit this in like a couple of maybe a couple of hours at most and then everything else has been split between my works in progress so I'll yeah I'll just get into my works in progress the first work in progress that I have is a project that I'm pretty sure I showed last time it's my afro sweater and this is by Irene Lynn and this is being knit up in yarn that was gifted to me by my friend Faith she sent me a sweaters quantity of mountain metal wool in their Saratoga base and 
it is I I love this yarn like this is my last cake here it is so bouncy I think it's I want to see it's is that woolen spun where it's like more airy I don't know I'm not 100% someday I'm gonna have to like educate myself actually educate myself on the terms that are like how yarn is spun and stuff like that anyways so this is my afro sweater I've picked up I think since last time I picked up uh, so I have the first sleeve on hold right now. So I knit to the end of the first skein that I had for the sleeves. And then I knit the set. I started, I picked up and I've started the second sleeve. And I have, I think I have half a skein left. So I'm basically going to knit the second sleeve until I run out of yarn. And then my last skein, I'm going to split between the two sleeves so that I can get a full, full length sleeves. But this is, this is what she's looking like. And I can see on the camera, there's, looks like there's a line. <laughs> like when I knit the left front and the right front and then connected it underneath, I must have used a new skein. I did not do any helical knitting or alternating of skeins at all in this. But in person, it's not, the like the yarn itself is not like super uniform. Oh, probably better to see it on the back there. Oh yeah, you can see it on the back. Um, huh, yeah, you can see it a lot more on the back. The first skein is a little bit darker than literally every other skein that I've used, but that's okay. I'm not too concerned about it. It's very, I don't know. I still think it's like super duper cute. It's like this bubblegum pink, which I think will be really adorable over a pair of jeans. I don't know, I'm so excited. Um, so this pattern, um, Faith from Fiber Fables, she's knitting this in the same yarn but in green. And when she sent me this yarn, it's essentially the idea was that I would also knit the Afro sweater and then we would kind of have matching sweaters. So I thought that was super cute. And so I was like, absolutely, I'm going to knit the Afro sweater because I, I want to knit the sweater anyway. And because the design elements on it are super really cool like this um the twisted ribbing the one by one twisted ribbing here with the lace detail on the sleeves is super cute like I don't know I, I just love all these little design details and basically like I'm at the point now on this sleeve where it's just one by one twist okay it's one by one half twisted rib all the way around so you're only twisting the knit stitches not the pearls and it's looking I don't know my camera's gonna focus but I I love the way it looks and then you can see on the hem as well. Oh, I'm sorry. It's kind of hard to hold this up. It's kind of squishing in on itself. But on the hem, it's got the same, a similar design with the lace um, half diamonds, I guess, or the, the, the triangles. So I'm really excited. Um, I didn't break the yarn at the bottom yet because I'm not. I still have this much left. And I think I could get a couple more rows. I think what I'm going to do is once I finish the sleeves, I'm going to block this and see how much it grows. Um, Cause right now it's a crop length. And I think if it grows a little bit, I might take out some rows or if it's not, if I could add, I don't know, if I need to add a little bit more then I can just go back, unpick the bind off and then add more without having to weave in extra ends. So that's why I'm not cutting that yet. Um, yeah, and then this is what I have left for the the second sleeve and Then and then I'll have more than enough to finish for sure And I'll probably have leftovers and maybe I'll make a little bow with this as well with the leftovers, but Oops, I'm getting caught and everything But yeah, so that's my my Afro sweater. I've already done the neckline I am going to assume that oh, yeah, and I still have to graft the I still have to graft these pieces together, but I'm gonna assume that I'm gonna hope that when I block this, that this edge will stop rolling as much. Um, if not, that's fine because it's at the back of the neck. But I do really like... I was hesitant at first to do the, the neckline, uh, the eye cord, but I actually really like the way that it looks. I think it's very clean and it, it goes well with the the rest of the, the texture in the pattern, I think. It just kind of, you know, matches. But yeah, so that's my afro sweater and i'm hoping i'm really i'm very slowly chipping away at this it's 
the twisted rib while I love the way it looks it's not the most fun to knit oh my gosh it's like I don't mind knitting on it for like maybe a half an hour an hour at the most and then I'm like, okay, I'm done. I'm done doing the half twisted rib. I need to do something else. Um, but all that's left on this is half twisted rib one by one. So that's why I've I picked up a couple of other projects. Um, if I can get this back in. So yeah, so that's work in progress number one. If I can get this back in my bag. There we go. Okay. Work in progress number two is just the itty bitty beginnings of the a cardigan an all over lace and cable and bobble cardigan just right up my alley and this is called priscilla and this is by okay i i did look up how to pronounce her name Mar, marzana koyacek there's like a, a letter that looks like an l but it has a dash through it and i thought it would like as an english speaker i'm like oh Cola's check but I she, there's a YouTube video where she says her name and I'm pretty sure I like I, I watched it numerous times Marzana Koyacek I don't think I quite have the the proper pronunciation of it but that's I think that's as close as I'm gonna get for myself without practicing even more <laughs> anyways so uh, I picked up this pattern I think it was like a month ago she had a sale and this was one of the patterns that was on sale so I, I bought it because it's been in my favorites for a long time um, so this is the what is this this is the right front panel and this is what it's looking like so far it's got this lace panel here with like these twisty stitches and there's like some cables in here and there's cables and then over here we've got these sets of baubles and lace oh my gosh I am in love with this pattern I <laughs> I would be a lot farther I probably would be done the left front panel by now had I not made so many mistakes because I initially I was looking at the chart for this squiggly thing here and I just assumed that it was a one-way braid like it's always a cable front a cable twist front or whatever and so I did that all the way to here and then I looked at the pattern I was like oh no it's supposed to be a squiggly <laughs> cable so I, I it just ripped the whole thing out because I didn't want to fix because it was I didn't want to fix three sets of cables that I messed up so I just I don't know I guess it's two sets of cables that I messed up I didn't want to have to go and fix them I figured you know it'd just be better for me mentally if I just rip it all the way back and start over so I did it again I got to about the point that I'm at right now and I made I went I was looking at it and I had made a mistake somewhere way back here and I was like oh my gosh I crossed a or I don't know what I did I messed up royally and so I was like okay well I'm gonna try and drop down and fix it and then I'll just knit it back up oh boy that was so if you see the stitches kind of like go on a diagonal this way and then that way and then this way again so I tried to drop like I guess it was down here I tried to drop a couple of stitches all the way down to like the middle point where I made the mistake but these stitches dropped all the way to that side and then I was like oh no I'm gonna have to drop more stitches and I, the more and more stitches I dropped the more I was like you know what I'm just gonna tear it all the way back to where I made the mistake and just re-knit the whole like not the whole thing but re-knit from where I made the mistake so I was very proud of myself that like I'm at a point in my knitting where even though this is like lace like it's lace and baubles and cables and stuff like that um I basically ripped back from here all the way up to about I was like an inch in I was like you know if I can save it I'm gonna try and save it so I basically just I took the needles out and just pulled all the way back to that row picked up all the stitches again on the needle rearranged them because like when I pick up the stitches the live stitches after ripping out I don't really care to get them on correctly the first time because what I do is I'll pick up all the stitches and then I'll go back and readjust or rearrange the stitches so they're all facing the right way and then sometimes if I really mess up when I'm picking up the stitches like I I pick up or like I drop some stitches or whatever I'll pick up the stitch below and then what I'll do is I'll just tink back that row and then re-knit it which I think if that makes sense but yeah the bobble oh my gosh look at the bobble they're so cute. 
So the, the method I'm using for the baubles is not what's written in the pattern. I discovered that uh, when I, I think it was when I made the Faye Summer Top, uh, the baubles in that pattern call for a crochet bobble, like using a crochet hook. And so after doing the bobble method in the pattern, I decided I didn't like it. So I went and I did the crochet bobble. And I think it looks a lot nicer, a lot cleaner. Like look how nice those baubles look. So exciting. Oh, that was a little bit flat. Okay, just like perk it up. Anyways, so this is an all over textured cardigan. It's gonna have a little bit of a, like a scalloped button band. And I think it's got like three quarter sleeves. So yeah, I think I've got a couple more rows on this. I am a little bit second guessing myself that maybe I should have knit the size three instead of the size two. Um, because this is looking not once why well, and I'm certain once once it blocks it'll be it'll sit a lot more nicely um, but as it is right now it just looks a little bit small but I know this yarn grows like crazy when it's blocked so I'm I shouldn't be too concerned worst case scenario in my mind I always think you know if it doesn't fit I just rip the whole thing out start again so that's something that I I personally don't mind doing just means I get to knit with the yarn again. But I mean, if I could avoid it, I would like to, but it's not the worst. It's not like the end of the world if I if I make a garment and it doesn't fit. And then, yeah, this is why I should be doing gauge swatches. Um, but I still haven't and I, I really want to start doing it. And then every time I go to do it, I'm like, eh, no, let's just throw caution to the wind and let's just, yeah, go for it. So we'll see how this turns out. Uh, I got, yeah, like I said, a couple more rows on this side and then I pick up for the left front and then I connect it with the back. The, oh, that was one other thing about the pattern. When I, usually with patterns like this, you start with the back panel and then you do the right front and then the left front and then you connect from the left to the back to the right front. Um, and that just, that's just the way it's always made sense to me and the way I've always done patterns like this. But this pattern has you do the right, the left, the back, and then come back and pick up again from the left front, I think, and then connect it all around. So I'm going to have two extra, what was that? Yeah, two extra ends to weave in. So, or two or four, something like that. But that's okay. I'm going to follow the pattern as it's written. I don't want to, don't want to make any adjustments just in case. Like I haven't read, I haven't read super far forward. That's just the gist that I got. And I was thinking like, oh, well, I could adjust it. I could have done the back panel first and then the, but maybe that's, there's a reason for it the way that you pick up the stitches for the left and front. Anyways, all that to say, I'm, I am really enjoying the pattern. It's definitely uses all of my brain power though. The lace and the lace and the cable chart, well, actually all the charts, except for the one squiggly cable, all have wrong side rows where you're doing something other than just straight purling. So on the lace rows, you're doing lace on the right side row and on the wrong side row, you're doing lace and decreases as well, like yarn overs and decreases. So, and because, you know, you're reading the chart from the right to the left for the right side row and then from the left to the right on the wrong side row, I, that's where I think I made the mistake early on where I think I accidentally read a wrong side row from the right to the left instead of the left to the right. And that's how I made the the decrease was slanting the wrong way but yeah so it's it's definitely is a pattern it's been a while since I've had a pattern that has had wrong side rows that have been a little like more I've had to use more brain power for them but yeah oh I forgot to mention the yarn that I'm using for that project is by Midnight Cravings and it's their Comfort Sport DK base. And I picked this up at Knit City last year. I got four skeins of it, which should be enough to knit the, the cardigan as designed. And I'm gonna, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna knit the body until I connect under the arms, maybe do an inch or two. And then I'm gonna do, I think I'm gonna go and do the sleeves, finish the sleeves because I don't mind if the body, if I am gonna run out of yarn, which I don't think I will because I've got just under a thousand yards or no, what is it? Just under, yeah, just under a thousand yards. It was 900 meters. And I think the pattern called for 
just like somewhere around that amount. So give or take probably a little bit depending on my gauge and stuff. So I'll finish the, the sleeves first and then I'll go back and finish the body because if it ends up being like more cropped than in, than in the pattern, that's fine by me. I don't mind a cropped cardigan. But yeah, so that's my second work in progress. And my last work in progress is, there's actually, I'm making two of the same thing in different colors. So this is a crochet pattern actually. I'm crocheting two blankets. And it's, the pattern is called Succulent Spring Hexagon Afghan. And this is by Jennifer Renaud. And I've got three hexagons so far which I will show. So one blanket that I'm knitting, or oh my gosh, one blanket that I'm crocheting is going to be this charcoal black and blue. So that's the, that's the hexagon. And then the other blanket I'm crocheting is in this white, kind of like an antique white. I think the color is actually called antique white and pink. So that's that. So I've got two, I've got two of the white and pink ones so far. The blanket itself, I think, like, you can essentially make it whatever size you want. Um, I think I'm going to be doing one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I think I've got ten full hexagons and then I think it's four half hexagons to make a lap blanket, I think is what I'm going to aim for because um, the recipients of these blankets at the moment don't need a full bed size <laughs> blanket for sure. Um, but we'll see, I, I'm, depending on how, depending on when I end up, well, I don't think I'll get bored of this. I actually really enjoy crocheting this pattern. Um, but depending, I, what I'm gonna do is I'll, I'll get the 10 hexagons and then, um, I'll lay them out and I'll put them together or I'll just lay them out before like attaching them all together and see what the total size is and then decide if that's big enough or if I should just go all out and crochet the whole bed size like a whole twin or double size bed uh, size blanket but yeah so that's yeah that's these so I'm really excited and this is using stash yarn as well the only thing is with this one I had this in stash but the pink I did have to buy one ball of the pink yarn but I got it at 50% off at Michael's because they had a 50% off coupon which is super rare these days so I got the ball of yarn for like four dollars after tax or something like that so yeah um oh and the yarn that I'm using is uh, for the main color I'm using uh lion brand pound of love there we go that's what it looks like so it's like a giant ball of yarn probably a pound 16 ounces 454 grams uh it's 1020 yards or 932 meters per ball and then for the contrast colors for, for both of these i'm using loops and threads so i think this loops and threads impeccable yeah it's just 100 percent acrylic yarn the recipients of these blankets are definitely going to um need easy care blankets throw it in the washer and dryer I'll definitely be throwing it in the washer and dryer before I gift them um because I know the especially the pound of love or the lion brand pound of love like softens up even more in the wash and dryer like it's already pretty soft for what it is uh, but I know it softens up even more so uh, what are the colors I think the colors I'm using is the pink is soft rose the blue I think is called misty blue and then, yeah, I think the white is antique white and the charcoal is charcoal. I'm almost certain it's called charcoal. Um, but yeah, so I, yeah, making, making progress. I'm actually super, oh my gosh. Okay, hold on. Let me just hold this up. Like, oh my gosh, I'm like in love with white. Like the combo of white and pink is super cute. My only issue with this pattern is that, okay, it, I messed up the very first hexagon, um, there were some, there was two new crochet terms to me, like two new to me crochet terms that I messed up a couple times. And then like the way it's written, um, 
Oh, did I say? Oh, yeah, the pat. Oh, right. Let me just say this. The pattern is technically free on Jennifer Renaud's blog, but you can pay, I think it's a couple of dollars for the pattern without any advertisements. And I think it comes with video tutorials. Um, so if you don't mind website ads and stuff like that, then you can get the pattern for free. But, um, you know, oh yeah, the, the only thing I don't like about those patterns is there's so many ends to weave in. Uh, the way it's written is, um, I mean, I'm, I'm still trying to wrap my mind around why I can't carry the yarn up. In certain sections it makes sense, but there's like one section right here where the two pinks, they're so close together that I'm like, I'm pretty sure on my next hexagon I'm just going to try and carry the yarn up and see if that works. Uh, so that's two less ends that I have to weave in, or one less end that I have to weave in. But, oh my gosh, I kind of want to crochet one of these for my own bed, actually, now that I see this. That looks super cute. But yeah, maybe another time. I don't want to have to buy more. I don't like I'm trying really hard not to buy yarn. I just went to Fibers West and bought a bit of yarn. Um, that was like one of my only exemptions for this year for not buying like I don't want to buy yarn except for like there were three exceptions to that rule. One was for a test knit. The other one was for Fibers West and the third one will be for a sweater, a sweater project that I'm planning on knitting later this year. Um, so this again, like I said, stash yarn, I did have to buy the pink for this, but it's getting the, the rest of this out of stash, which is nice. So that I don't mind that I, and again, it was only $4. So anyways, that's I'll Yeah. Now I'm going off on tangents, but anyways, it's super cute. I'm super excited about it. I'll probably work on that, um, after this video or after I'm done filming, but yeah. Okay. I think that's it. That's it for work in progress, my finished objects. Thanks uh, thanks again for sticking around and watching my project update. I'm hoping to get some more, I'm really hoping to keep the cadence of once a month project updates because it seems to be doable for me. And then I'm hoping to possibly film some extra videos like once a month. So we'll see how that goes. Um, my next video I'm hoping will be my spring cleaning video where I'm going to go through my stash here in the studio and at home and hopefully talk about my plans for the future of my stash. So fingers crossed, I actually stick to my plans and get that done because that should be the next video that you see. <laughs> Otherwise it'll be another project update in a month. But yeah, okay, now I'll stop talking. Thanks again for watching and until next time, happy knitting. Bye.